Hey, what's up? You guys might already know this about me, but I'm from Chicagoland. And if you're not familiar, it's what we call like the 300 mile mass of suburbs around the city of Chicago. It's a huge place. And up there you might think that deep dish pizza rules supreme, but it's just not true. Thin crust pizza is the pizza of the Chicago suburbs. It's flaky, it's crisp, it's got a really concentrated kind of sweet tomato sauce, and it's got tons of cheese on top. So of course we're gonna get started with the crust, and this is a really easy one to put together. You don't need a stand mixer, you just need a food processor. So grab that and into it measure 330 grams of all-purpose flour, six grams of salt, and four grams of yeast. Give that all a quick pulse to combine, and to that we're gonna add 30 grams of cubed cold butter, and we're gonna follow that with 170 grams of about 90 degree water. On medium speed, that's gonna take about 20 seconds to come together, and it's gonna sort of pebble up before it fully combines. Butter might seem like a weird choice for pizza crust, but in my experience, oil just doesn't do the trick here. The butter brings flakiness and crispiness. It's almost like a pie crust, instead of a pizza crust. I made this a bunch of times with oil and it's really crisp right out of the oven but it dies like right away. It becomes kind of tough within five minutes and it definitely doesn't hold on to that signature thin crust flaky crispness that we're going for. Once all of our butter and water bring this dough together in the food processor, we're gonna flip it all out onto a work surface and give it a nice squeeze to combine. We're gonna give this dough some light kneading to finish it off and just to bring it together. We don't have to work too hard here. We're basically just trying to get this more combined and to build a bit of strength. This is going to take about 45 to 60 seconds of gentle kneading. And at that point, we're going to transfer it over to a stainless steel bowl to rise at room temperature for about two and a half hours. While the dough is rising, we're going to get our pizza toppings sorted out. And this is as good a time as any to talk about tomatoes. So there's a million ways to turn canned tomato product into pizza sauce. You can use whole peeled plum tomatoes, tomato puree, diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, tomato paste. There could be a whole series of videos devoted to just tomato product, and maybe that's a good idea for the future. But today we're just concerned about what's the best tomato product for thin crust pizza. So let's think about this. This pizza is gonna be in the oven for about 10 minutes and it's gonna be covered with cheese and toppings. That's not a lot of time to let it get concentrated and reduced, so we probably need a sauce that's a little bit more thick and sweet to start. I started with my go-to uncooked sauce, which is basically just a can of crushed tomatoes with salt, a little bit of sugar, and some seasonings, and I use that in the sheet pan pizza video if you wanna check that out. And it had good flavor, but it wasn't sweet enough. It wasn't concentrated enough. So I called some friends who I grew up with who tossed pies in the suburban pizzerias of Chicago, and according to them, it's mostly tomato tomato paste and water with some sugar and some salt, maybe some spices added. A lot of these Chicago pizzerias also cook their sauce to concentrate it. I like the tomato paste idea a lot, but I do not like cooking my sauce. I think it kind of adds a little bit of unnecessary complexity, so I wanted to replicate that, but I didn't want to pull out a pan and have to stir it for 15 or 20 minutes. So to do that, I went with tomato sauce, which is basically just tomato puree that has some onion powder and garlic powder added in, and it's kind of like starting with a cooked tomato sauce base. And to that, we're just gonna add some tomato paste to kind of thicken it up, make it more concentrated, and then your standard Italian seasoning type stuff. So, to make that sauce, open one eight ounce can of tomato sauce, Into that we're gonna add 40 grams of tomato paste. To that we're gonna add a half gram or a strong pinch of dried oregano, five grams of salt, and 10 grams of sugar. I'm gonna blend this up real quick with my immersion blender to break things down, but you could also just stir this to combine. Give it a taste real quick, make sure you like it. It should have a good depth of flavor, it should have a concentrated tomato situation, and it should be a little bit sweet. Once we're happy with that, we're gonna set it aside, and I'm gonna grab a whole stick of natural casing pepperoni. Pizzeria is probably use a pre-sliced pepperoni here, and this is one of the main ways I'm gonna be departing from them. I love the flavor of this boar's head stick pepperoni. It's actually fermented, it's real food. It only takes a second to slice them up for pizza, so for me, it's time well spent. I'm gonna be slicing this stick of pepperoni in about 1 8 inch slices. Make sure to eat about every 10th slice for good luck, be a little bad dog like B-Boy. In there, we're all sliced up, we're gonna set those aside and grab our mozzarella to grate. And I wanna go on the record as saying I'm not anti-pre-shredded cheese, but I also don't love it. It's covered in cellulose to prevent caking. And it's usually shredded too fine for me and doesn't melt quite right. So I bought a one pound block of full fat mozzarella and I'm gonna be grating it on the thickest side of my box grater. If you can find a coarse grated mozzarella at your grocer or Italian market, give those a try. So we're gonna work through that by giving it a coarse grate and then we're gonna set it aside. At this point, you're probably done with all your prep. It probably only took you like 15 minutes. It takes very little work to produce this pizza. 
Any teenager can do it as an after school job. All they have to do is like puree a sauce and put a piece of dough through a roller. And another thing to consider before we get started on making this pizza is have some cornmeal at the ready. It's not just the ball bearings that load the pizza into the oven. It's a huge part of the flavor. It gives a really nice crisp, toasty corn vibe to the whole pizza. Okay, so it's been two and a half hours and our dough has risen by about 40%. Before we shape, I'm gonna preheat my pizza stone in the bottom of my oven at 550 degrees or as hot as your oven will go. This is a really dry dough, so it won't double like some of the other doughs I've shown you guys on this channel, but it should be risen and have some gas in it. We're gonna break this dough ball in half, roughly 265 gram pieces, and we're gonna fold them into flat, round balls. Dry dough snaps back a lot quicker than wet dough. We don't wanna work this more than we need to, so once we're balled up, we're just gonna set these aside for a minute and let them rest on the counter for 15 minutes. Okay, after 15 minutes, we're gonna shape these pizzas and it's really easy. Grab a little bit of flour to keep your dough from sticking to the counter and also grab your rolling pin. I'm gonna start shaping this pizza by giving it four to five rolls with this rolling pin. At this point, the dough ball should be flat, pretty uniform in thickness and about six or seven inches wide. From here, we're gonna finish stretching this by hand. If you're right-handed, the move here is to hold the upper right corner with your right hand, pull it with your left till you reach some tension, then you're gonna flip it over your right wrist and then you're gonna flip it back. Ooh, I hit the microphone. <clears throat> Okay, you're gonna, let's try, let's try this again. Your hand's in the upper right corner of the pizza. With your left hand, you're gonna pull and tug on it till you hit some tension, and then you're gonna flip it over your right wrist and then flip it back, rotating it 30 degrees. We're gonna repeat this stretch and flip technique nine to 10 more times until we have a reasonably uniform, round 12 inch thin crust pizza. If your skin rips or gets too tight to shape, don't sweat it, just set it aside for a few minutes to rest or pinch the hole back together and finish shaping. So to make this pizza, we're gonna take our stretched pizza skin, and we're gonna throw it onto a well cornmealed pizza peel. So I made four dough balls, but I'm gonna start with showing you the pizza that I order every single time and I'm calling it the B-Boy. Pepperoni, pepperoncini, oregano, parmesan, lots of cheese, lots of sauce. I've eaten this pizza probably 350 times in my life and I'm gonna eat it another 350 more times because it is the best version of a pepperoni pizza that I can think of. We're gonna spread about half of our pizza sauce on this crust. And like I mentioned, this recipe will cover two pizzas, but if you like a very saucy pizza, you might wanna make a two times batch of this sauce just to make sure you have plenty. It's gonna cost about a dollar more and it's gonna take you about 10 seconds extra work. We're gonna follow that sauce with a liberal amount of mozzarella cheese, probably about six to eight ounces. Behind that, I'm gonna give it a bunch of pepperoni, maybe like four to five ounces, and tons of spicy banana peppers that I've sliced. To finish the pizza, we're gonna hit it with a generous sprinkle of Parmigiano Reggiano and a light sprinkle of dried oregano to really drive home that pizzeria flavor. We're gonna throw this pizza into bake for about 10 minutes at 550 degrees. We're looking to get a really dark and crispy bottom crust with some well-browned cheese on top and some pepperonis that are just starting to fry. Pizzas like this should be cooked hard. Pale cheese is not good. Don't do it. We wanna take this pizza to the point where our pepperonis are charred and our cheese is getting orange. It's just starting to be spotted with brown. Once our pizza is cooked, we're gonna take it out and let it set for five minutes before we cut it into squares. And that's the first pizza. That's Brian's teenage dream come true. That's the classic, that's the B-boy. But here we go, we got three more fun variations coming up. So the first one is kind of like a play on a margarita. We're gonna cornmeal the peel, lay down the dough, and then we're gonna sauce this thing from edge to edge. We're gonna follow that with about five ounces each of shredded mozzarella and fresh mozzarella. We're gonna top that generously with tons of fresh basil, and we're gonna season this entire pizza with some coarse salt. We're gonna finish the whole pizza with a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil, making sure to cover the basil to help it fry instead of steam. And 10 minutes later, we've got something adjacent to a margarita. It's got most of the stuff you love about a margarita, but it's still definitely a Chicagoland thin crust pizza. So enjoy that one. Up next, we've got a white pizza, specifically a mushroom white pizza. I thinly sliced and cooked down some mushrooms for about 15 minutes to remove excess liquid and to season them up a little bit. Raw mushrooms on pizza don't work, so just don't do it. This pizza starts with a generous amount of shredded mozzarella. We're gonna follow that with about eight or nine chunks of fresh mozzarella. I also have some really high quality goat cheese in my fridge from a local farm, so I'm gonna put that on top as well. The sharp funkiness from that goat cheese is perfect for the earthiness of the mushrooms. We're gonna top that with some Parmesan cheese to sort of make it almost like a quattro formaggi or four cheese pizza. And to cut through all that fat, we're gonna bring a little bit of acidity with some pickled red onions. So into the oven this pizza goes, and 10 minutes later, we have a cheesy mushroom cracker. It tastes real good. I hope you love it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this mushroom pizza. Okay, so our last pizza here is a no cheese pizza. 
Sounds crazy, stick with me. We're gonna put down double the amount of sauce here to get started. So now we're gonna add a copious amount of fresh basil and fresh oregano. After that, we're gonna add two cloves of garlic that we thinly sliced and let's sit in a bath of olive oil for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I make sure to get all that garlicky olive oil all over the pizza. And we're gonna finish this with a generous amount of Calabrian chilies and some salt. We're basically looking to make a super savory, sweet, salty tomato cracker. We're gonna load that into the oven for about eight to 10 minutes. We're gonna finish it with a generous amount of olive oil. You might be surprised, this could be one of your new favorite pizzas. It's very herbaceous, spicy, floral, sweet. You don't need cheese on a pizza. That's thin crust pizza, specifically in the style of Chicagoland, where I'm from. And if you guys wanna keep watching pizza content, I link down below to our sheet pan pizza video. Check it out there. If you guys like this video, consider giving it a like. Hit that like button because it lets YouTube know that we're here and that you guys like it and it might show it to a few more people. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around and we'll see you next time.